Creativity is the ultimate freedom. I find it amazing that everybody has their own story to tell. Being able to create without limits, without boundaries, there's just something so inherently beautiful about that. My name is Chris Meyer, and I am an audio engineer and producer. I've been doing audio ever since I was uh, ever since I was in middle school. I went to school for audio engineering, and then afterwards I started to do it professionally. I grew up in Mercedown, Pennsylvania. It's Berks County. There's not a whole lot here. Um, we're about two hours from New York City, an hour and a half from Philadelphia. You know, there um, there really aren't any studios around here. Uh, you know, there's there's musicians, but there's not you know really music scene. Fortunately, we live in the digital age, so I am able to work with clients all over the globe. It's kind of uh, limitless what what you can do nowadays from a town that's not, you know, a, uh, a music capital or a music hub. Nonetheless, it's still challenging. It's still challenging, but it's a challenge that I, uh, I welcome. Creativity, to me, is a way of conveying ideas and thoughts in your head and putting them out into the real world. And I think it is probably the best way of artistic expression that can't be replicated or manufactured in any other way. My name is Zach and I am a videographer. I grew up in a small town of Sladington, Pennsylvania. Went to school there 12 years of my life. Not a whole lot here. I'm glad I got out of it. Went to college elsewhere. Lived a bunch of places outside of there. The ruralness of it, there's just not a whole lot of opportunity. But as an advantage, I think, without having a lot of people around. For me personally, it gave me a lot of alone time to work on my craft and hone my craft. Kind of that small town drive and bigger, better things on the horizon viewpoint, I think I've always had that. Currently, I am doing video in the health and wellness field as an occupation, but I'm also doing side projects with bands and friends and family, documentary stuff. Growing up, I was a drummer and um, I was in a punk band and we wanted to record. So what happens when a band wants to record? Well, there aren't any studios around here, so I took it upon myself to get the stuff necessary to uh, record my band. And it's been all downhill ever since. But no, uh, in all seriousness, I wouldn't change it for the world. It's, uh, I, it's just something that I have an immense love and passion for and um, I really can't see myself doing anything else other than you know that type of creative uh, work. There was really no other option. I didn't see myself enjoying any other field of work. It was kind of like now or never for me being creative. It was, I was in a bad place. I wanted to bring myself up. Taking those anger and emotions and not feeling good enough and putting it back into myself somehow. I kind of wanted to get myself out there to the world, say, hey world, I'm still here. I'm still angry. I'm still, I'm gonna come after the world with a vengeance. I need to get myself back on track. And uh, I really put a lot of that anger and emotions into being creative. I started production on a metal music YouTube show thing that I was working on. That was a very fun experience to create that from literally nothing to uh, what it became. I realized that it was just having that, that freedom of here's a blank slate and here's the end product, how do I make that work? That journey between blank slate and final product is just an indescribable feeling of that I don't get anywhere else from except from video. In my life, I've had um, three experiences where you hear a song and right then and there, you know that who you are as a, as a person instantly changes. You know that once this song is over, you are not going to be the same person you were before you started listening to it. It's like time stands still. The the hair on your neck stands straight up. You remember that exact moment. It's, it's literally a spiritual experience. To be honest, that's why I got into music right there. Um, you know, like, 
wanting to do it for a profession for more than fun because me being that lost kid finding these bands and just having their their world turned upside down for for the better you know just finding myself in those three songs it may sound selfish but I want to do that for other people you know and that's why I do music I want someone to listen to the music that I either write, play on, produce, record, mix, whatever. And I want them to have that same spiritual experience and it really helped them for the better. I think an advantage of working alone is you have all the time in the world to hone in on any idea you have, make it happen, put as much work into it as you need to. But conversely, that can lead to getting stuck in like mental ruts. So an advantage of having other people to work with, it's definitely nice to be able to bounce ideas, bounce creative thoughts off someone. And sometimes just a fresh set of eyeballs, fresh set of ears, it's always, always beneficial to have that when working with a group. Working alone can be, it can be very dangerous, but a good collaboration, it just leads to more creativity than you could have ever dreamt of yourself. And um, just having that extra person there to, you know, bounce ideas back and forth. And really, you're kind of both just getting into the project, really believing in it, loving what they're doing. And it just creates for some of the best times. It's an interesting story with Zach because he and I had, you know, we grew up in, in different towns, it was only about 40 minutes apart. We ended up liking the same sort of music and basically doing the same sort of things, going to the same concerts, and, and we re our, our paths really never crossed until, until later. It all started, we met at a Faster Pussycat show. Faster Pussycat was headlining and my band and Zach's band were both on the bill. I was wearing a, a band hat. I remember I liked his hat, I told him I was like, Hat, dude. And you know, we might have said a couple other things that night, but that was pretty much that was pretty much it. I met him again at another show. I was uh, doing photography for another band, and I ran into him again. We started talking about bands, about music. I told him about um, that I, I was just in Sweden. He said, "Well, hey, if you guys ever need help with like a video, just let me know." And so we got to talking on um, social media, and turns out we don't live that far apart. You know, it's, it's just crazy because we're just like comparing these like lists of like all the shows, you know, that we've been to over the years and it's like, wait, you know, like we've been, you know, we've been in the same place. Turns out we probably saw each other and never, never met till later. Kind of comes around, through, you know, just full circle and um, it's super cool because Zach and I, um, we have a really good collaborative process. We have a very democratic way of working things out if we don't have the same vision in mind. His field is audio production, my field is video, which obviously go hand in hand, but I have an interest in audio production and he has an interest in video. It really works out. Our strengths, our weaknesses, we kind of uh, complement each other. We're really good at kind of like volleying ideas back and forth. And the fact that we learn that about each other is like, hey, we should start working on things together. And from there, we just kept talking and brainstorming a small idea and it just goes back and forth and back and forth and grows into this monstrous sort of idea and um, hey here we are um, doing an interview of me and this you know this is just one example of uh, of one of our crazy ideas it just gets blown up and blown up and blown up and now it's out of control.